the Soviets beat the Americans with the first spacewalk in March of 1965, the Americans wanted to add their own twist to their first extravehicular activity. With that in mind, NASA prepared to launch its most ambitious mission to date, Gemini 4. In June 1965, former Air Force pilots Jim McDivitt and Ed White would launch into orbit and remain in space for four days. To perform America's first spacewalk, Ed White would float free outside their spacecraft with the help of an unlikely device, a handheld maneuvering unit powered by compressed oxygen, also known as the Zip Gun. Bridge to the Moon When the Soviet Union surpassed the United States with cosmonaut Alexei Leonov's first ever spacewalk in March of 1965, NASA was already planning a similar feat as part of Project Gemini. NASA's second human spaceflight program, Project Gemini, was the Americans' attempt to catch up to the Russians. Often referred to as Bridge to the Moon, Project Gemini was overshadowed by the Apollo moon landing program's success. Still, it did provide a spectacular leap forward from the rudimentary single-person capsules of Project Mercury. Launched between Project Mercury and Apollo, Gemini officially started in 1961 and concluded five years later. The program had four main goals. To test a human's ability to stay in space for long-duration missions. To understand how two spacecraft could rendezvous in orbit around the Earth and the Moon. To perfect re-entry and landing methods. And overall, to further understand the physical and psychological effects of prolonged space flights on astronauts. First American Spacewalk with a Twist After the first crewed Gemini mission was a success in March of 1965, the United States began planning a more ambitious undertaking, Gemini 4. The project, set to launch in June of the same year, would be the first American multiple-day spaceflight. The U.S. wanted to show the world, and especially the Soviets, that they could also remain in space for an extended amount of time. The four-day flight would approach, but not break, the Vostok 5 mission's five-day record. Another main objective was to perform the first American EVA, or extravehicular activity known as a spacewalk. Finally, the Gemini forward attempt the first space rendezvous by maneuvering the spaceship close to the Titan II rocket that launched it into orbit. When the first spacewalk was achieved by Soviet Alexei Leonov during the Voskhod 2 mission, NASA moved up their Gemini 4 project from its original launch date. Air Force pilots Jim McDivitt and Ed White were selected as the flight's crew. Both White and his mission commander McDivitt were members of NASA's second class of astronauts. The plan was for White to become the first American to perform a spacewalk. The Gemini 4 mission was so secretive that only 10 days before the scheduled launch, newspapers were reporting that NASA, quote, had not yet determined whether White would be the first American astronaut to expose himself to the elements of space, and that, quote, such a significant decision would only be announced until a day before launch. To perform America's first spacewalk, White would step into space by using NASA's latest technological device, the Zip Gun. A handheld maneuvering unit, also known as a maneuvering gun, would provide an impulse to propel the astronaut away and back to the spacecraft. The Zip Gun received its propellant from tanks on the device and used pressurized oxygen to control and thrust the astronaut. The astronaut would be able to control his own movements in the microgravity environment. Take off. On June 3, 1965, the Gemini 4 spaceflight launched into orbit from Cape Kennedy Air Force Station in Florida. It was the first flight controlled by the newly built Mission Control Center at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas. For the first time in history, an international audience was able to watch a launch on live television. The feat was accomplished via the Early Bird satellite, which was put into orbit just two months prior. Also, media attention was so high that NASA had to lease entire buildings to accommodate over 1,000 accredited journalists. Once the ship was in space, the crew's first objective was to attempt the rendezvous. The spacecraft would try to tether the Titan II booster rocket used to launch it into orbit. However, the task proved more complicated than initially conceived. There was inadequate lighting on the stage, and the astronauts didn't have a radar aboard the spacecraft to be precise on the target. McDivitt decided to stop the attempt in order to concentrate on the upcoming extravehicular activity, the mission's original purpose. The First American Spacewalk 
Once the Gemini 4 spacecraft was floating above the Indian Ocean, astronaut Ed White was ready to perform the first American spacewalk. He attached the umbilical and tether lines, activated a camera placed on the spacecraft, and triggered the zip gun. White rose above the hatch, propelling himself away from the spacecraft. Quote, Okay, I'm out, he said. The astronaut floated outside the capsule, tethered by the umbilical cord that provided oxygen and communications with the Gemini spacecraft. White continued to experiment with a novelty zip gun and was able to move 16 feet away from the spacecraft. He then tried to glide over to McDivitt's window by shooting short bursts of oxygen through the handheld maneuvering unit he was holding with his right hand. Once he was close, White tugged on the tether to pull himself aft and high atop the spacecraft adapter. But the zip gun suddenly ran out of power. For the remainder of the spacewalk, White had to twist his body and tug on the umbilical cord to move. While White was using the zip gun, Mission Control was unaware of his well-being because of an error in communications. After the mishap was fixed, radio listeners heard the exchange between the two astronauts. Quote, You look beautiful, Ed, McDivitt told White as he took pictures of his fellow crew member tumbling around in space outside his window. Quote, I feel like a million dollars, White responded. After 20 minutes, McDivitt told White that he had to return to the spaceship. The whole world heard him sigh and say, quote, It's the saddest moment of my life. Returning to the hatch. As the Gemini 4 spacecraft was hovering above the Atlantic Ocean, White floated back to the hatch, dismounted the camera, and handed all the items to McDivitt. McDivitt then helped White settle into the hatch by pulling his legs and guiding him inside. Closing the hatch was more challenging than expected. Pushing on the handle lifted White out of his seat, so McDivitt pulled him down to give him leverage. After yanking a little bit harder, the door finally latched. Both men were exhausted, with sweat on their faces. They rested for a few moments before extending the radio antenna and letting Mission Control know that it all went favorably. Touchdown. For the remainder of the mission, McDivitt and White performed 11 scientific experiments. One investigation involved spacecraft navigation using a sextant to measure their position against the stars. The intention was to investigate the technique's feasibility for future Apollo lunar flights. Another experiment focused on taking images of the weather and terrain on Earth by using a Hasselblad camera. On June 7, 1965, McDivitt and White began the re-entry process. The spacecraft landed 43 miles away from its intended landing target, but a helicopter crew from the USS Wasp carrier was able to spot the astronauts. Within a few minutes, Swimmers jumped into the water and fastened a flotation collar around them. The pilots were then hoisted into the helicopter. 57 minutes after touchdown, McDivitt and White stepped off the helicopter and onto the recovery ship's deck, receiving a cheerful welcome from the USS Wasp crew members. State of Mind Although the Gemini 4 crew seemed to be in great shape after landing, Physicians in the carrier were worried about their well-being after being in a weightless environment for four days. However, White began dancing jig-step in front of the Wasp's crew, and the tension immediately dissipated. The Wasp's medical team observed the two astronauts for over 66 hours. They underwent several medical exams that did not reveal any significant problem. In fact, just one day after touchdown, White oversaw a group of Marines playing a tug-of-war and joined them. Even though McDivitt and White were fatigued after their incredible mission, they showed no sign of illness other than a loss in blood volume. Like most American astronauts before them, both men lost weight. McDivitt lost four and a half pounds, while White lost eight. White spoke later of his feelings about being the first American to do a spacewalk. Quote, There was absolutely no sensation of falling. There was very little sensation of speed, other than the same type of sensation that we had in the capsule, and I would say it would be very similar to flying over the Earth from about 20,000 feet. You can't actually see the Earth moving underneath you. I think as I stepped out, I thought probably the biggest thing was a feeling of accomplishment of one of the goals of the Gemini 4 mission. I think that was probably in my mind. Aftermath Although the Gemini 4 didn't break the Russian record of spending five days in space, the American mission almost doubled NASA's previous achievements. Before McDivitt and White's journey, 
The longest American space flight had been the Mercury 9, which lasted 34 hours. Gemini 4's success received massive global coverage. The feat provided a glimmer of hope amidst the ongoing American involvement in the Vietnam War. President Lyndon B. Johnson traveled to Houston to congratulate the crew and team who collaborated in the Gemini program. At his request, McDivitt and White traveled to the Paris International Air Show, where they met cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, the first man to venture into outer space. The Gemini program provided a giant leap forward for NASA space missions. The spaceship is currently on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Different models of the handheld maneuvering unit were used on further Gemini missions. Astronaut Michael Collins successfully used it with a nitrogen gas propellant on Gemini 10, while astronaut Richard Gordon could not activate his device on Gemini 11 after he became fatigued. Future technological advancements gave way to more efficient propulsion systems, helping astronauts achieve more goals by being able to use both hands.